So in this video, we're going to be talking about shell voicings. Now, shell voicings are going to be our first foray into seventh chords. And seventh chords are a little bit more finicky to work with on bass. Um, triads we were doing in the past couple lessons, we can do it in all sorts of ways. Um, and I'll show you why seventh chords are a little finicky. Let's take the same sort of technique that we used in the closed position triad video of creating these voicings by voicing down from a top note. So let's take C major 7. Let's take the top note of like an E right here and voice down uh, to a C below that. But the next note below that is a B. The next note below that is a G. So in order to actually play this closed position major 7 chord voicing down from the E, we'd have to use, we'd have to tap it. Yeah. So yeah, not very practical and doesn't really sound that great anyway. So we're going to approach uh, seventh chords from a slightly different angle at first, and then we're going to work our way back. We're going to start with these things called shell voicings, which, is, which are used by pianists. And pianists use these um, in their left hand, and generally um, when they're soloing, it's basically a very nice, simple way to come up with their left hand. And what it is is um, a voicing with the root on the bottom and either the third or the seventh on top. And these translate very nicely to bass for a couple reasons. One, they're simple. Um, two, they incorporate um, a lot of tenths. They're going to end up sounding good because of a lot of tenths. Remember in the first video we said, or I said, I like the sound of tenths on bass. There's going to be plenty of tenths in these voicings. Guitarists, interestingly enough, they don't use these voicings that often. Um, and I think the reason why it appeals to bass players um, would be because the root's always on the bottom, so it's always grounded. It always feels like a really solid sort of foundation. So let's uh, take a look at these um, through the lens of autumn leaves. Um, and let's do it in G minor. I know the real book key is E minor, but uh, we're, we're doing it in G minor. Um, and before we go in, um, I'm going to set up a series of rules. One, uh, each of these voicings are going to have two notes. Two, um, two notes are going to be root on bottom, third or seventh on top. And three, the, each uh, voicing, we don't want to have the notes on consecutive strings. And the reason for that is, is we want to try and avoid, at all costs, violating a lower interval limit. We don't want these things to sound muddy. We want them to sound nice and free and open. So uh, the first chord in Autumn Leaves in G minor, we're just going to go through the first eight, eight measures, is C minor 7. So we're going to voice it up here, and we're going to play the C right here. And then uh, we're going to play the seventh of the C minor seven because we're going to have to skip the string and play the B flat on top. And so what we have here is a shell voicing for C minor seven. The full, arpe full arpeggio is this. So within the context of music, with all that's going on, this gives you plenty of information to try and discern what kind of chord this is. Um, which is why pianists use them a lot because their left hand is taking care of this basic shell and the right hand is filling in all the blanks. So we're, we're right hands aren't going to be filling in any, in any blanks, but you can still get most of the information you need just from these two notes. So we got C, B flat on top. Next chord is an F7 chord. So we're going to play F on bottom, and then we have two options. We can either play this E flat here for an F7, the minor seventh of an F7 chord, or we could play the A on top here. And I would pretty much venture a guess that most people would prefer to hear this one. The reason for that is, is because the voice leading between the B flat seventh on the C minor seven and the A third on the F seven just sounds nicer than. Cool. So if we keep going on, we got a B flat major seven. So we got the B flat on bottom, and then we have A on top. That uh, this shell voicing for a major seven. Keep going on. We got an E flat major seven, so we play an E flat on the bottom. And we either have the option of playing this D right here, or we have the option of playing the G on top. I would want, I would probably play the G on top because that voice leads a little bit nicer from the A down to the G versus nothing wrong with that. It just voice leads better. So the next one we have A minor seven flat five. Okay, we got the A here, and we'll keep the G on top from the E flat major seven. slip all of that down to the D7. So the G goes down to the F sharp, which is the third of the D7, and then we play the D on the bottom. So each one of these voicings has the root on the bottom, very nice for us bass players. So this whole progression so far, before we resolve it to the G minor, sounds like this. Cool. 
Now, um, this is the step where I lay some jazz science on you. Um, if you're trained, have basic training in uh, jazz education, or have been jazz educated, this works against you here. Because um, you've probably been told, and I think in the real book or where else, uh, the G minor chord, or the tonic home bass chord of this progression, is a G minor 7. So we have a minor 2, 5, A minor 7, flat 5, to D7, to G minor 7. If you apply shell voicings to these, it's that G minor 7 is going to really stick out as something not sounding good. Check it out. Um. It doesn't sound resolved at all. It sounds like, you know, that's this is supposed to be the home base. This is supposed to be like where we're, where everything's ar arrived and like, ta-da! It doesn't sound good at all. And... In practice, nobody ever plays the minor seven um, on on a tonic minor chord, and you can sort of hear with these shell voicing. This kind of proves why it just doesn't sound good. That minor seven make, gives it a really odd pull in some weird direction that you don't really want to go to. I would either I wouldn't resolve it to that minor seven. I would resolve it up to the root so we get an octave. This sounds a lot better in my ears. Sounds a lot more classically voice led and all of that stuff. And the reason why it, it sounds better is it, it's just a little bit more logical. Just the, the, your ear hears it a little bit better. A lot of people also play a major sixth. And this is something that might take your ear a little bit longer to wrap around, but it doesn't sound as uh, unsettled as when you play the minor seven on top. For example, this. It's, it sounds a little more settled, and it implies this mi um, melodic minor scale. So anyway, um, those are some, that's something that you can mess around with, these shell voicings. And that sort of particular point about the minor, the tonic minor chord is just sort of a nice little uh, side that you can sort of think on. Um, when you start playing with these shell voicings, you'll start hearing a lot of these sort of voice-leading sorts of ideas that have come about. Uh, through practice, now um, a lot of people again said that minor seven, minor seven chords like that should be a G minor seven. You can see pr pretty plainly here through um, how these shell voicings voice led that it's not probably not the best choice to have a minor seventh on that chord. Anyway, I hope that gave you some ideas.